You're watching the firearmschannel.com. So, pals and gals, George Gifford of the firearmschannel.com here talking to Greg Broadmore from Weta Workshop. Uh, Greg, what are you holding right here? Tell me a little bit about the weapon you've got. So this is uh, one of the District 9 weapons that I designed for the movie. It's, um, it's called, we just call it the Assault Rifle, nice and simple name. Um, Neil wrote all the descriptions for each of the guns that I designed and you know, basically he would write a laundry list of the features he wanted. And so there was a, an arc, you know, he wanted a lightning gun, which became the arc generator. An assault rifle, which became this. A submachine gun, which was a cut down version of this. Uh, a vacuum cleaner kind of thing, which I don't think is seen in the film, but he would just write these esoteric lists of what he, the sort of, what he wanted the weapon to do, and I would just design it from that. And this was, yeah, the assault rifle, which was used by Christopher Johnson in the attack on MNU. And when you're designing this, uh, what are your inspirations? I mean, everything looks functional. This looks like it's something that's totally operational. How do you determine, I like this shape, or I like this design, and then how do you bring all that together? Well, the, the, in terms of whether the sh you like the shapes or not, or that's kind of just like a gut feeling. You just kind of, it's just intuition as an artist, I suppose. Um, but there are certain, you start to post-rationalize certain things that make sense to you and why you like them. But um, there's a lot of factors that went into the design. Uh, and there is the practical, and there is, of course, just the, um, the, the uniqueness of it. You're trying to fight a battle as a designer between making something interesting and stand out and make it feel like it's a new thing in some level and surprise people, but also make it feel complete, believable and practical and, you know, and pragmatic. And, and that's the balance, and it's a tricky thing because the two things are in opposition with each other. Uh, and, uh, and hopefully with these, you kind of get a, 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 hopefully something that's a good balance because there, there is a, a certain amount of thought behind the science of it, uh, but also there's a certain lot of thought behind just making it look like an ostentatious kind of object, you know. Out of all the rifles from uh, District 9, uh, which is your favorite? Uh, man, it's really hard. Actually, I think almost my favorite weapon is a cut-down version of this, of the SNG, but it's only sh seen in like uh, one scene, you know, in the background of a shot during the test footage. Uh, but basically it's this with a, um, a cut-off at about here, it's like a, and then it's got sort of a big side assembly on the top in a cut-down magazine. Your background as a designer, um, where did you study? What was your background? I don't have any background in design other than I th or I've always thought that I've done it my whole life. You know, ever since I picked up a crayon, I figure I've been designing. But no, I never went to any school. There aren't really too many places you could, well, any places uh, when I was growing up that you could learn film design. Uh, New Zealand only has like four million people or about three million when I was growing up. And so, yeah, there was, there was no large scale sort of fantasy or science fiction film industry. So, but I always loved comics and movies and video games and just did that stuff anyway. And so luckily it was like right place, right time for me. And I managed to get a job at Weta just in, during the middle of um, Lord of the Rings and sort of fell into, went from drawing tanks and robots and dinosaurs at home on my own to getting paid to do it. So I was just so, lucky, man. So basically with persistence and passion, almost anyone can become a filmmaker, but you have to have that skill. Uh, the skill can be developed, totally. I think it's just perseverance and, um, and desire to do it. You know, that's, that's the important thing, is just wanting to do it. Everything else falls into place as long as you have a, a desire or a goal, you know, and some passion to push forward with it. Greg, let's talk about the latest insanity that's coming out of Dr. Gordwart's laboratories. Yeah, so this is the Pompson, which is a uh, subatomic ray gun. It's, um, it's the latest in the sort of high-end art collectibles we make. We only make 50 of each of these. They're made in metal from our, our cast aluminium. And it's designed and look and feel like a real ray gun if such a thing was possible, you know. So it's a right-handed weapon. All the readouts are on one side and all, all the operating pieces are on the other. I want it to just feel like, you know, a real ray gun, but, the, you know, you don't have the ammunition. So, uh, and this one's obviously probably a little bit more ostentatious than some of the others. It's also a little bit more solid. I wanted it to be a bit more chunky and a bit more, slightly more utilitarian than some of the other more esoteric looking ray guns I've designed. And my thought was that it was the, um, uh, it's the des weapon designed for use by like the special forces in the world of Dr. Crawdbots, the Earth Elite Forces. So kind of like the SAS or the Delta Force of that world. Well, let's talk a little bit more about uh, Dr. Gordbort and there's something coming up on the horizon possibly. Yeah, well, it's, it's fully our intention to, you know, develop it into a feature film and games, uh, animation and so on. And that's something we've been working on for quite a while. And it's, it's a weird way around to do it. We started with the guns. Well, start, I started with the guns and then developed the comics and the fiction. And it's kind of like a really, an almost an ass about face kind of way to do it. But it's just the way it sort of grew naturally. And um, yeah, and that's the next step on the, on the path for us. Well, if um, somebody wants to explore the world of Dr. Gordbord some more, where can they find it? Uh, the best place to come is uh, Weta NZ or NZ.com, uh, but you can also just do a search for my name, Greg Broadmoor, and um, uh, and you can find my blog and our website. And also, there's drgroadbots.com if you can uh, if you can spell that. <laughs> Flashing up on the screen now. D R G R O R D B O 
www.ntrs.com. Greg, um, I have a copy of the book that you're holding, and it's a phenomenal book with some amazing artwork. Tell me what's in it and uh, where we can get it. Yeah, sure. So this is um, this is my second book in the Dr. Broadbots world. Through um, that's published through Dark Horse, so it should be available through um, through all their distribution channels and through comic book stores. It's also available through WetterNZ.com again, uh, and it's yeah, it's a. Uh, it's kind of a, I view it as propaganda for children. It's a, you know, I was, that's the way I imagined it when I was illustrating it. And it's kind of a book of, uh, of, of the ray guns in effect through military use. The world of Dr. Grodbots, of course, he's a, he's a weapons manufacturer and he wants to make the most money possible. And uh, so he sort of engineers wars and wants us to head out into the solar system and subjugate the godless heathens of Venus and so on. And this is the book about recruiting young people to join the armed forces to do so. And so it's a, it's got a, it's a, it sort of revolves around Lord Coxwain, the sort of braggart and buffoon, moron lead character of the world. And it has uh, comics and so on within it about that. But it also has and descriptions of bizarre aliens that you might want to shoot. <laughs> and um, races to exterminate. Exactly, races to exterminate. War, isn't it fun? And giant tanks. And of course, the guns that get used in the world. So the blunderbuss. And some of the new guns we're making, there's the Pompson that you just saw before, the Righteous Bison. Yeah, so it's kind of a semi-catalogue of all the stuff in the, in the world of Dr. Grodbortz, but more a way of how to use it. Okay, and that's available through the Weta uh, website and from Dark Horse, correct? That's right, yeah, correct. Of course, we were working on District 9 last year, and um, we're producing an art of book. This is just the sample version of it with only a few pages in it. Uh, but it's, um, it basically goes in and gives a bit of a, a background to all the... The, we did thousands of illustrations for this film, went through different, many different alien variations as you can see and unfortunately very little of that work ever gets to be seen so it's, um, it's a treat for us finally to be able to get out uh, an art book that shows, I think it probably gives a, an, uh, a coverage of maybe 80% of the artwork we did for the film in some, in some sense and that'll be out in uh, November I think. And meanwhile I think everyone needs to go to uh, the Weta website and check out everything from Dr. Gordbor to Lord of the Rings and there's a, a podcast. That's right. Uh, yeah, we do. we do a podcast every week. It tries to give a little bit of insight into the um, into the Weta workshop and the people that are working there. So yeah, check it out. Thank you very much, Greg. This is George Gifford for the FirearmsChannel.com at Comic Con International 2010. You're watching the FirearmsChannel.com.